Well, there's been a lot of advances in many STCs over the last 10, 15 years, and mainly these have been on understanding the way the inner ear works and how the fluid circulates around the inner ear. And now we can be fairly sure that the reason people get attacks of Meniere's disease is because they get a sudden surge of fluid in the balanced part of the ear, the utricular portion of the ear. And this stretches the little nerve endings in the semicircular canals, which are the canals that make, give you the feeling of spinning one way or the other. And as they stretch, this causes the attacks. This is the vestibular portion of the ear here. These are the semicircular canals, and when the um, nerve endings in the semicircular canal get stretched, this is when you get the feeling that you are spinning or turning around. My theory was that excess fluid in the cochlear portion of the ear cannot drain away properly, and as a result it regurgitates back into the vestibular portion of the ear, then stretching the nerve endings in the semicircular canals causing the attacks of vertigo. Well, I've been involved from the beginning when we first found Dr. Brown and got him to work for us at the University of Sydney, and I very much admire the work that he's been doing. He has established a fantastic laboratory, and uh, we are now able to proceed with uh, some experiments to find out why fluid builds up in the ear. So the first experiment I want him to do is to inject some artificial endolymph into the utricular portion of the ear. He can then record what's called the vestibular microphonic to see whether or not we can then model the attacks of vertigo that many as sufferers um, experience. Now the next question of course is why do they get this sudden surge of fluid in the utricular portion of the ear causing the attacks? There are a number of hormones that could be responsible. One interesting one is called vasopressin. In animals, it is a hormone that the animal secretes to retain fluid in the body. They do this when they're threatened or under stress. Human beings also under stress tend to retain fluid. And in your ear, there are four or five different vasopressins that can be explored. Um, we think that the build up of vasopressin causes the high drops to develop in the ear. The next thing I want to know is why suddenly that uh, excess fluid starts to move, shifting from the cochlea into the vestibular portion of the ear, causing the attacks of vertigo. Probably some sort of hormone that counters vasopressin is responsible. If we could find out what these uh, agents are, we could find a cure for Meniere's disease.